Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in today's session, we'll discuss about the iterative statements in JavaScript. So what is the meant by iterative statements and what is the use of these iterative statements? So here mainly same instructions. So whatever the instructions we are writing, same instructions can be executed multiple times. So we can execute some same set of instructions multiple times. And here we'll write some conditions. So for all the iterative statements, whatever the iterative statements we are using, we have to follow the three things. One is the loop variable initialization the second one condition the third one loop variable updation so we can we have we need to initialize one loop variable and then we have to write one condition so this condition is meant for terminating this execution okay so as we have discussed now the same instructions can be executed multiple times so after some iterations we have to terminate it that means we have to stop executing the instructions for that termination we'll write this condition so unless i mean until the condition becomes false okay until the condition becomes false the instructions will be keep on executing okay so for termination we'll write some condition and for every iteration we need to update the loop variable so we need to update the loop variable so that the at particular time the condition becomes false so automatically the instructions will be stop executing right so whatever the iterative statements we are using we have to follow these three things so there are mainly two iterative statements we are using that is a for and while for and while so coming to the syntax for the for for go with the initialization semicolon condition semicolon updation and open the block and close the block and here we have to write the condition uh, statements here we have to write the statements so this is the syntax for for loop so this initialization will be executed only once the initialization will be executed only once that means in the first iteration and immediately after initialization happens the condition will be checked so we have to check the condition this is the second step and if the condition becomes true that means here if the condition becomes true the control will enter into this loop okay the control will enter into this loop and it start executing all these statements which are written in for and after completion of all these uh, after completion of executing all these statements updation will be done okay updation will be done and after updation again it will check for the condition whether it is true or false if it is true again the control will enter into the loop it will start executing all the instructions once it, it executed all the instructions again updation will be done and again condition it will check for the condition so this initialization will be executed only once at the beginning and then it will check for the condition enter into the loop updation again check the condition enter into the loop updation so this will be repeated until this condition becomes false so at particular time after some finite uh, number of executions finite number of iterations so this condition becomes false we have to write like this so if the condition becomes true every time so it will go with the infinite loop okay it will go with the infinite loop so it never stop executing these statements so that's why we have to write the condition 
So after some iterations, this condition becomes false. So whenever the condition becomes false, automatically the control will come out from the loop. The control come out from the loop. Okay, it doesn't enter into the loop. So this is the for loop. And see, we need not follow the same syntax here. So we can also write the initialization out or inside. Okay, initialization can be written inside for loop or outside for loop. Inside for or outside for. Okay, and condition. Similarly, condition. Condition can be given inside. Condition can be given inside with break. So we can use a break statement. Okay, in order to terminate, we can write the break statement. And then updation. So updation is also used inside for inside for loop. Okay, in the for loop or inside the for loop. Similarly, here also initialization can be done in outside the for loop. Okay, outside means above the for loop. Okay, above for loop or in the for loop or inside the for loop. Okay, so here like this we can write for semicolon. So these two should be done. Okay, two semicolons to, should be given here. Okay, this is a syntax. This is a syntax and you can open the curly braces and you can write the initialization condition and updation here itself. So initialization, up, sorry, condition, updation here. This is also correct or you can write the initialization here. Use a for loop, write down the condition here give the updation here so this is also correct okay this is also correct syntax so here the syntax is two columns separating the three things that is the initialization condition and addition so these things can be written in number of cases so i will execute a program showing all these cases don't worry and we'll go with the while loop while loop so even the while loop also we have to follow these three that is initialization condition and updation so the syntax is while followed by the condition the statements and updation so here we have to write the updation and here we have to go with the initialization initialization so this is the syntax for while loop this is the syntax for while okay so just uh, i will show you how to print the n numbers okay so i will go with the for i okay is equal to zero so i am giving some initialization then i less than or equal to 10 condition i plus plus updation go with here some print i print i so in order to print i so we have to go with the anyone that is we are we are having different ways to print the output on the screen right so we can use a inner html we can use write ln or we can use a alert box so whatever the thing we can use anyone among these three to print i value so automatically for the first iteration i is zero zero will be printed here in the second iteration i becomes so condition so first one i is equal to 0 0 less than 10 true so print i 0 and updation i plus plus that means 1 1 less than is equal to 10 true so 1 will be printed again updation 2 2 less than or equal to 10 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 10 less than or equal to 10 true 10 will be printed and updated so 11 11 less than or equal to 10 false so automatically the control come out from the loop so like this we can execute the for loop similarly while loop also so go with i is equal to 0 while i less than or equal to 10 while i less than or equal to 10 open 
and go with the print i and i plus plus okay display i and i plus plus means updation so immediately i is equal to 0 0 less than or equal to 10 print i so automatically 0 will be printed and updated i plus plus means updation so i will be updated to 1 so 1 less than or equal to 10 so again true 1 will be printed 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 when i is equal to 10 10 less than or equal to 10 true 10 will be printed and 10 will be updated to 11 and here 11 i is equal to 11 11 less than or equal to 10 it's a false so automatically the controls will come out from the loop so this is how we can work with iterative statements like for and while so just recalling the concept so whatever the iterative statements that means either for loop or while loop so whatever the iterative statements you are using you need to follow the three things that is initialization condition and updation so these three are very very important these three are very very important so in this thing where we have discussed about the for loop and while loop so uh, i will demonstrate these two iterative statements by executing a small html code so let us move on to the screen hello friends so just now we have seen the syntax for all the iterative statements mainly for loop and while loop so now i will show you the demonstration for this for loop and while loop so for that we will just start writing the html content so let us start with the html tag so in between the html tag we'll write the body and we can write the script inside the body itself okay so first let us uh, give a heading like uh, iterative statements so this is a heading we'll get on the page and we'll also write some paragraph because where we have to display the output so paragraph id is equal to a result okay and close the paragraph so in between here uh, we'll get the result or simply we can go with the h2 right now we'll write the script here so inside the script we, we need to uh, give the iterative statements so we'll print uh, the the numbers n numbers right some for that uh, we'll first go with the for loop first we have to initialize the value and i less than or equal to 10 i plus plus and inside that we'll go we'll give some result is equal to or directly we can print here or uh, we'll give some uh, here result plus is equal to i plus space so we'll give some space okay for that we'll uh, give some i is it i value and similarly result is equal to some empty string and after the for loop we'll print the this one document dot get element by id result result is the id where we have to display the output so in our html is equal to what in the result here it is so now we'll print here so i will save this one as iter dot html and now we'll execute this file so that we'll get the result see you can observe here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 right so if you place here 100 we'll get the result with right and if you want to divide each and uh, each i mean uh, 10 numbers in a row we will write some condition here uh, if i mod 10 is equal to, is equal to 0 then what we have to do we have to do result plus is equal to br br means break row right you can observe here right so for every 10 numbers we'll get we'll start printing in the second line right so this is how we can demonstrate the for loop so uh, first initialization condition and the updation so for the first time the initialization will be done and immediately it will check for the condition if the condition is true then 
this complete body of the for loop will be executed and after executing this one again updation will be done and after updation again it will check for the condition that means this initialization will be executed only one time that's the only first time right next condition if if condition is true it will enter into the loop it will start executing all the statements into the in the for loop and after completion of this execution it will again update the loop variable and again check the condition so this is the happens in the for loop and now say similarly just replace this for loop with a while loop so in the while loop also we have to use a loop variable so here we'll take some loop variable as i uh, we'll initialize the loop variable outside the loop so i will initialize here and here uh, instead of writing all these things we'll write simple condition while i less than or equal to 100 right so updation we need to updation so we will update the variable inside the loop we'll update the loop next you can observe the content is here okay and also if you go with the two So for every mod two is equal to zero, we'll get the break back, break row. Okay. After every even number, we'll get the break row. So we can consider the first line as a odd numbers and the second line as an even numbers. Right. So this is how we can use the while loop. So whatever the iterative statements we are using, first we need to have one loop variable initialization and then the condition and then the updation. So in for loop. in for loop syntax we are taking all the things in the single line okay separated with the semicolon initialization semicolon condition semicolon updation but if coming to the while loop we can initialize the value outside and we can we have to write the condition and we can update the value inside even in for loop also we can write the initialization outside and updation inside okay so let us check for that so for and this syntax is should be followed right semicolon and i less than or equal to 100 colon close see still we are getting the same output we'll change this one so i'm taking again i mod 10 so that 10 numbers will be printed in a single line so you can observe here that change there is no change but here we are using the initialization outside the for loop updation outside inside the for loop okay here we are not using all the three statements we are using only condition but we have to separate with the semicolon two semicolons must be there okay so two semicolons must be there right so this is how we can use the iterative statements that is a for loop and a while loop so hope you understood this one so let us stop here and if you are having any doubts regarding these iterative statements feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts and if you really understood my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much.